I now convene this ceremony installing Thomas J.P. McHenry as the fourth president and ninth dean of Vermont Law School. Members of the Board of Trustees, deans and members of the faculty, students and parents, staff, alumni, distinguished delegates from universities, colleges, and law schools, representatives from Vermont's congressional de delegation and honored guests, welcome to Vermont Law School. We're especially pleased to have you all here on this auspicious occasion. Now please rise for our national anthem. I'm Chris Dutton, Chair of the Board of Trustees of Vermont Law School, and it's my pleasure on behalf of the trustees to welcome you all, faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Vermont Law School, as I said, representatives of the Vermont Congressional Delegation and members of the local, state, and national legal community to the institution, installation of Vermont Law School's fourth president and ninth dean, Thomas J.P. McHenry. I'd like to introduce to the audience those members of the Board of Trustees present here today. Please rise. They're a hardworking group who take seriously their responsibilities for the governance and direction of the law school, and they're pleased to be present today as part of the law school community. I'd like also to recognize the faculty and staff of Vermont Law School. Please rise. Thank you for acknowledging this outstanding company of teachers, scholars, administrators, mentors, and employees. Today's event has been made possible by the hard work of a dedicated group of faculty, students, staff, and alumni, which includes Mary Ellen Applequist, Lorraine Atwood, Lori Berenavend, Stephanie Shirella, Colleen Connor, Kim Harris, Joanne Jordan, Mark Latham, Shannon Leach, Jenny Leach, Karis North, Mary Wells, and Stephanie Wilbanks. I'd also like to thank our musicians here today. Piper Ben Montross, an MSEL alumnus from the class of 2007, the members of the VLS Chorus, and the Cat's Meow Singers from the University of Vermont. 
We are honored today with the presence of delegates representing institutions from Vermont all the way to California. It's my pleasure to recognize the following delegates. Dean Ingrid Burke, Yale University, founded in 1701. <laughs> President Thomas Sullivan, University of Vermont, founded in 1791. Vice President Patrick Gallivan, St. Michael's College, founded in 1904. Alumna Charlotte Albright, 72. Bennington College, founded in 1932. Visiting Associate Professor William Christian, Claremont McKenna College, founded in 1946. Chancellor Jeb Spaulding, Vermont State Colleges, founded in 1961. Pascal Tone, Franklin University, Switzerland, founded in 1969. Please join me in welcoming these delegates to South Royal College. As we embark on this ceremony, it seems fitting to take a moment to reflect on the tenure of Vermont Law School's prior deans, each of whom has left an indelible mark on ins this institution. Anthony Doria, who served in 1973 and 74. Thomas M. Debevoise, 1974 to 1982. Jonathan B. Chase, 1982 to 87. Douglas M. Costel, 1987 to 91. Maximilian Kempner, 1991 to 1996. Kinvin Roth, 1996 to 2004. Jeffrey B. Shields, 2004 to 2012. Mark B. Mahali, 2012 to 2017. And of course, Thomas J.P. McHenry, 2017 to the present. <laughs> Finally, in welcoming Tom McHenry to this important role, I'd like to also welcome his family, his parents, Barnabas and Ben and McHenry, his sons, William, who's unable to join us today, and Jackson, and Tom's wife, Elena, Welcome to the Vermont Law School family. Now, it's, it's my pleasure to welcome a number of special guest speakers to the podium. I think you're gonna recognize that there are a lot of them. And so I'm gonna ask that each of you introduces your, introduce yourselves so that the audience can understand who you are. Um, and please do so prior to your remarks. So first, we have Mark Mahali. Thank you, I'm Mark Mahali. I teach here. <laughs> and, and I have the honor of, of, of somehow transmitting the thoughts of former deans. So, so what I want to do today is to communicate to Tom McHenry our wishes for him. What, what do we really, truly wish for Tom, I ask myself. But you know the situation where you want to give someone a gift, but they already have everything? Well, we could wish for Tom that he should develop a brilliant faculty. But Vermont Law School already has a brilliant faculty. We, we could wish for Tom that he build an intelligent and dedicated staff. But we already have the best staff in the legal academy. We, we could wish that he create a powerful national specialty and identity. 
but that too, as you all know, we possess. And finally, of course, there are over-the-top wishes that are simply out of the question, so we wouldn't bother wishing for Tom a low discount rate <laughs> or an easy budget. So seriously, Tom, what do we wish for you? Well, it's not that hard, really. Tom, as any dean would know, the VLS community stands with you and wishes you wisdom in your administration of this great school, success in spreading the word around the world that this Vermont institution provides innovation and excellence, great patience when you need it, luck in finding at least one devoted billionaire. <laughs> Funny, they thought that was so funny. All right. All right. Sound sleep most nights. Time for your family and contentment and happiness in your work with us. Our best to you. You have, we have your back. So now I would like to introduce Ann Debevoise. No, wait. Oh, you'll bring your mark. Okay, yes, Anne. I, I saw no. I saw, I saw no. I saw no remarks. <laughs> well, this is um, a day that we recognize, and this is to to Tom that. Uh, the beginning of the ninth chapter in the saga of Vermont Law School, as far as the deanship is concerned. Um, VLS was pieced together out of fragments from what they could find, as you know, <laughs> which, which was uh, not always good. <laughs> and uh, so, but it worked. And uh, some people at that time were risk takers, including Thomas Debevoise. And, uh, but it, it worked. So here we are today in this lovely, lovely green, lovely people. And I just can't thank you enough for coming because it's very, it's a, just a great organization. Um, many, many people have made this uh, institution successful and the, one of the things that they've added is a human di dimension to the study of law. So people are really interested in their community, the politics, and this is so important today. Um, I'll just close by saying um, VLS has to keep its moral compass because the ground and everything is shivering around us and it's just terribly important that we keep that moral compass. And so for, Lee, for the history of Lee, VLS, coming together was the beginning, keeping together was progress, Six, and success was the final outcome. Not victory, but success. And lots of people took the hard right instead of the easy left. So good wishes to all of you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, and, and welcome as we celebrate the installation of Thomas J.P. McHenry as the ninth president and dean of Vermont Law School. Uh, I'm Mark Latham. And uh, I, I know people in the audience will cringe when I say this, but I'm a member of the faculty. Um, now, for those of you with triskaidekaphobia, that is a fear of the number 13, I, I, I probably shouldn't mention this, but what's today? Amy, Friday the 13th, very good. And, um, and you'll hear from 13 individuals who will welcome the new dean today as well. And also, it's almost exactly 13 years to the day when I first came to Vermont Law School 
to celebrate the installation of Jeff Shields as the dean and president of the uh, law school. And I thought that that would probably be my only visit to Vermont Law School. <laughs> but while I was here, a spell was cast on me. And uh, the, the primary signs of this spell, I'm not kidding, <laughs> include the irresistible urge to move from Chicago, come to Vermont and live on a farm, and, and join the Vermont Law School faculty. And so in that capacity last year, thanks to this gentleman, I was the co-chair of the Dean Search Committee along with Brian Dunkiel, VLS class of uh, 96, and uh, a trustee. And one of the things I learned in that capacity was that Tom is very inquisitive. He asked us thousands and thousands of questions. And in fact, on his campus visit, I expected him to show up with a court reporter because I felt like he was being deposed. <laughs> now, um, since Tom lived in Southern California, we anticipate his questions about the weather. But um, I, I was surprised at how easily it was to convince him that this is as cold as it gets here. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, and I'm also a bit surprised that he, he followed my advice and he completely ignored the fake news about snow in Vermont. And uh, so, yes, Dean, you may ride your bike here year round. Um, now, one of the other things I shared with uh, Tom was, was that VLS is truly a magical place. Uh, after all, he had cast a spell on me, and, and, and the source of this mysterious magic is from folks from our trustees, the administration, the faculty, the staff, the students, and, and our spectacular location here in South Royalton along the White River. Uh, and also the fact that we're one of the few independent law schools in the country. Um, now, in my private sessions with Tom, or Dean McHenry, sorry, uh, I, I, I was very blunt when he asked me, well, from your perspective, Mark, what, what, do we, what, what does this school need? And I said, well, we need a train. <laughs> um, if we had a train several times a year, it would stop right outside Worthy Burger, uh, to drop off new students for the short walk to our magical campus, much like Hogwarts Express of Harry Potter fame. Now, as I mentioned this to Tom, I, I noticed he looked like some of my torch students when I'm screwing up something, and he looked kind of confused, and so I explained. I said, if, if we had a train, then our new students wouldn't wander around Burlington on the campus of <laughs> University of Vermont looking for the law school. <laughs> So um, he, he's now on board with this, and, and to, at tomorrow's uh, board meeting, he's going to announce a new fundraising effort to make the Swan Express a reality. So um, Tom, on behalf of the faculty, we're thrilled that you are here, and welcome you and your wife, Elena, to the magical, magical and mystical place that is Vermont Law School. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, I'm Chantel Brackett. I'm the human resources and payroll manager here. But for the fourth year, I'm also the staff representative on the board. And Dean McHenry asked me at the staff potluck at his home if I would speak on behalf of the staff. I was a little nervous. So thankfully, um, Dean Beth McCormick sent me a TED talk about public speaking. So I feel like I have to do my power pose for a second. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, on behalf of the 89 members of the Vermont Law School staff, it is my pleasure to welcome you, Dean McHenry, to your position. The staff have already noticed that you have hit the ground running and, an eager, and are eager to put efficient systems in place. We thank you for reaching out and engaging in conversations, not only through the Dean Staff Advisory Committee, but also in meetings uh, with departments across campus, one-on-one -on -one conversations, and at the staff potluck at his house. Little bit of information, he has a zip line in his backyard. <laughs> My seven-year-old walk walked up to him and after he told her that, she hugged him, having never met him before. <laughs> uh, one staff member commented that not only does Dean McHenry ask for our opinions, he remembers what is said and later brings it up in conversation. The staff and students appreciate your enthusiasm, across, enthusiasm for campus events and your vis visibility across campus. 
We look forward to building relationships with you this year and the years to come. So thank you and welcome. Hi, and thank you. My name's Jenny Leach. I'm a 3L here at Vermont Law School, and I'm one of the student trustees on the VLS Board of Trustees. On behalf of VLS students, um, it is my pleasure to welcome Dean McHenry to the Vermont Law School family. In doing so, I'd like to share with you some advice Dean McHenry gave to students when he welcomed us here for the first time this fall semester. His advice was on how to succeed in taking law to the community and the world. In his advice to students, Dean McHenry gave us a list of nine important points for success. But don't worry, I won't go into all of them here today. <laughs> but I would like to highlight one of Dean McHenry's points in particular, the importance of showing up. As for those other eight points, I'm sure Dean McHenry will be happy to share you, with you about them after the ceremony. So one of Dean McHenry's points was the importance of doing something as simple as showing up. He referenced a Woody Allen quote, saying 90% of success is showing up. Well, Dean McHenry has followed his own advice, and then some, leading by example. He's not only shown up here at VLS, he has jumped in. From the moment he arrived on campus this summer, Dean McHenry has prioritized getting to know students and the VLS community. In his few short months here, he has already participated in countless student activities and campus events, including the annual VLS 5K road race. He has established a popular program for students affectionately known as Excursions with the Dean, where he takes students on educational outings and is able to discuss ideas in an informal setting. Most recently, he took students to a nearby solar project built on a Superfund site in Stratford, Vermont. So through actions like these, Dean McHenry has exemplified that the power of the law often starts with the simple act of showing up. So welcome, Dean McHenry. Thank you for showing up and jumping in. Good afternoon, I'm Rick Johnson. I'm a Juris Doctor, class of 97, and I'm lucky enough to serve as the Vice President of the Vermont Law School Alumni Association uh, Board of Directors. And I'm honored to be asked to welcome Tom McHenry and his family to Vermont Law School, South Royalton, in the great state of Vermont. The Alumni Association is nearly 7,500 alumni strong. Our alumni are very active in supporting the school in many ways, from hosting events in their hometowns, to mentoring current law, uh, Vermont Law School students to alumni giving. There are numerous regional groups, uh, each of which hosts their own social events, networking events, and academic events. The alumni and the alumni board are looking forward to working with President McHenry, the board of trustees, the faculty, staff, and students, <laughs> and continuing to improve our special school. Now gifts. As many of you know, President McHenry attended colleges in Connecticut and New York. In other words, until President McHenry moved here this summer, he is what us Vermonters call a flatlander. <laughs> now that he calls Vermont home, the Alumni Association hopes to accelerate your transformation to being a Vermonter. When you drive the roads of Vermont, you will notice many Vermonters have vanity plates on their vehicles. In fact, Vermont is one of the leading states for vanity plates per capita. <laughs> If President McHenry agrees, the Alumni Association would like to provide him with this vanity plate for his car. <laughs> we recognize that there are some pros and cons with accepting this gift. On the plus side, the plates will remind everyone about our great school, and just as importantly, everyone will know who you are. On the negative side, everyone will know who you are. No more speeding, no more rolling stops, no more jacking deer. We still think the pros outweigh the cons, 
Again, on the behalf of the Alumni Association, I welcome President McHenry and his family to Vermont Law School, and I hope that our gift will bring, begin their swift transformation into Vermonters. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Larry Trottier. I am the chairman of the Royal and Slock Board, and I've been in my position for 14 years and have enjoyed a lot of it, and we've had an opportunity to work with the different deans over the years, and I'm looking forward to uh, working with uh, Thomas McHenry. And with that, we really, as a town, really are welcoming him to us, the ninth dean of the Vermont Law School. And I'm truly honored to be part of this ceremony. And I'm looking, and the town is looking to work with him through the different committees and also to be a better benefit to the life in the, for us and the law schools also. And with a successful thing to connect and collaborate, once again, we welcome Dean Mc, uh, McHenry and wish a long, successful tenure in the VLS. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Peter Hall. Having the honor and privilege to serve as a member of the federal judiciary, and more important to the point of the proceedings here today, humbly following in the footsteps of two members of that judiciary whose names are so deservedly attached to two buildings on this campus, the Honorable Sterry Waterman and the Honorable James Oaks. I presume to speak, and only presume to speak, for my colleagues on the federal bench, not only here in Vermont, but in this circuit and throughout the country. In doing so, I must note that Vermont Law School has proudly sent its students onto externships and its graduates onto clerkships in a number of federal districts and circuits, even as far as those islands in the Pacific Ocean in your former circuit, Tom. And I also note that each of those persons has served and continues to serve with honor and distinction, reflecting admirably on this institution. May it ever be so. Therefore, Dean McHenry, on behalf of the federal judiciary, it is with great pleasure that I now welcome you back to this district, where you have been from time to time over the past years back to this circuit, where among other events in your life, you attended college, law school, and graduate school, and most importantly, back to Vermont Law School. We extend our best wishes and look forward to continuing our relationship with Vermont Law School under your leadership. Welcome. Good afternoon. I'm Harold Eaton from the class of 1980, and uh, it was my high honor three years ago to be the first VLS graduate appointed as a justice on the Vermont Supreme Court. It's my honor. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't help but note when I heard one of the earlier speakers say there were 89 members on the staff, that when I went here there were eight or nine members on the staff. <laughs> Dean McHenry, it's on behalf of the Vermont Supreme Court, it's my honor to welcome you as you assume your role as the ninth dean of Vermont Law School. As the first VLS grad to serve as a justice, I'm particularly honored to be here today. The Vermont Supreme Court has enjoyed a close relationship with VLS since the school's founding. Over the years, the court and the VLS community have worked together on projects and committees in diverse areas of the law, Many VLS graduates have served as law clerks in the courts throughout Vermont and the Vermont judicial system, and as staff attorneys, as judges on the trial court, and most recently now as Supreme Court justices. The contribution that the VLS community has made to the pursuit of justice in Vermont are too numerous to list. They encompass not only helping Vermonters to access legal services, 
but countless other ways in which the school has contributed to the Vermont legal system, such as encouraging legal minds, promoting dialogue on important legal issues, and occupying a preeminent place in the protection of our national resources. You may rest assured that those contributions do not go unnoticed by the Supreme Court and that we are indebted to the school for them. Together, the Vermont Supreme Court and VLS share a common goal, to make Vermont a better place for all Vermonters. We know that VLS will continue to prosper under your stewardship. Vermont is a unique place, and VLS, as its only law school, occupies a unique place within it. You will come to find that this is a school like no other in a place like no other. The words of Calvin Coolidge ring just as true today as when he said them nearly 90 years ago. If the spirit of liberty should vanish in other parts of the Union and support for our institutions should languish, it could all be replenished from the generous store held by the people of this brave little state of Vermont. Welcome aboard. Good afternoon. I'm Sam Hoare. I'm past president of the Vermont Bar Association, current Superior Court judge in the state of Vermont, and my good friend Duke Eaton has just stolen most of my thunder in terms of <laughs> the relationship between the bar and, and the law school. It's been long, it's been strong, it's been mutually beneficial to all. So that's the formal part of my remarks. But I take particular pleasure in being here today because apart from his parents, I have known Tom McHenry longer than anybody else here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we are members of the great Groton School class of 1973. I note that we have two members of the class of 1975 in Jeb Spaulding and Professor Goodenough uh, sitting out there. But I've known Tom for a long time. I played soccer on the team in which he was a co-captain. We were co-captains of the ski team. So Professor Latham, you'll be happy to know that he's well prepared for a Vermont winter. <laughs> we're already talking about backcountry ski ex excursions, and I think he'll weather the winter just fine. But what I know of Tom McHenry from the four years that we spent together at Groton School in a very small class uh, are a bunch of characteristics that suit him well to lead VLS in the partnership that we in the VBA appreciate and that I know you as a community will, will appreciate. Uh, leadership, first and foremost. Dedication and diligence. Uh, strength, what was the S? Ah, strength, let's just stick with strength. <laughs> and patience and perseverance. This is a guy who, and by the way, he also knows the state of Vermont, as, I'll, as you'll hear. This is a guy who, for his senior project, our senior year at Groton School, paddled the length of Lake Champlain and the Hudson River from the Canadian border all the way to New York City with one of our classmates. And then because he didn't get enough of it, the next year he went back and he paddled the Connecticut from the Canadian border, its headwaters, to Long Island Sound. So this is a, a man of incredible dedication, incredible perseverance and patience because I won't, I'll tell you about the classmate that he went with privately. <laughs> he is well suited to lead your institution. He's well suited to lead this institution in its continuing partnership with the VBA, and I couldn't be more happy to welcome you to Vermont, Tom. Thank you. I'm just going to say right now, that's a tough act to follow. I don't have those credentials, and um, I really enjoyed the speakers. I won't be as humorous, uh, but uh, you will learn to know me from my brief remarks. My name is Pat Dennis. Uh, I'm honored to participate in Tom's uh, installation ceremony here to become the new dean. I first met Tom 30 years ago in Los Angeles when he had just graduated from NYU Law School and the Yale School of Forestry. Tom was looking for a position in a law firm and I was a senior associate at a boutique law firm that specialized in environmental law. Fortunately, Tom accepted our offer and little did we know 
It was the beginning of a three-decade friendship and professional relationship, first as associates together and later as partners. During that entire time, Tom and I remained close. We collaborated on many challenging projects, representing companies and individuals with environmental law issues spanning the full spectrum of civil and criminal enforcement matters, toxic tort and land use litigation, clean air, clean water compliance issues, hazardous and solid waste counseling. We spoke almost daily. And for those 30 years, our offices were usually just a few steps apart from each other. We often met instead of using the phone to discuss strategy or simply run something by one another on a case we were working on. For the past 20 years, we practiced as partners at one of the great law firms, Gibson, Dunn & Crutcher. That shared experience bonded us even closer. It gave us a unique opportunity to work together on the most challenging and important environmental law issues of our time, representing the world's leading companies and individuals. I wrote this the other day, yesterday as I flew back, and I wrote, just last night, I consulted with Tom on a matter. But I can rewrite that now. It was this morning <laughs> when we took a walk together, and I had to run a few things by him. I hope to have that opportunity occasionally, even as he serves as, as your dean. I promise not to take too much of his time. I'm sad to lose a fantastic partner, but I'm delighted he has chosen the Vermont Law School as his latest challenge. My loss will be your gain and then some. Congratulations on landing your new dean, one of the best among an elite community of environmental lawyers. My name is Indy Burke, and I'm the relatively new dean of the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. Tom, as an accomplished environmental attorney, you've done so much to protect our air, water, land, and the environment. You've served your firm, the city of Los Angeles, the state of California, and the public with integrity, commitment, and leadership. Today, my role, though, is to honor your service to the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies and congratulate the staff, alumni, and faculty on the wonderful decision they made in hiring you. Tom McHenry has a longstanding and exemplary record as a student of the legendary class of 1980. And they only gave me 400 words, so I'm not going to tell the stories I learned from your classmates. Then, as an alumnus and chair of the Leadership Council for the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, keeping our annual meetings focused, fun, and effective, with Tom at the helm, leading both by example and some arm twisting, the council raised over $10 million for school scholarships, among other achievements. You'll find that billionaire, I promise. <laughs> Tom is a generous mentor and connector. He's always willing to speak with a member of our community, whether a current student or an alumnus from decades ago. He's played an important role in maintaining the relationship between our school, the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, and the Vermont Law School as we have a joint degree program together. And I look forward uh, to how that can be strengthened with him in the dean's chair. I've only had the pleasure of knowing Tom for a year, although I quickly developed respect and affection for him, but I thought I should consult some of his former classmates uh, in writing these remarks. Again, there were some stories I found quite illuminating, but they're not appropriate for this setting. <laughs> but, so, but let me share one comment that really resonates. His classmate wrote, the one thing I love most about Tom is that when you talk to him, he's equally on receive and on send. He listens and he hears. This is a wonderful characteristic and a tremendous asset in a dean or president, as all of you are learning now. For his outstanding leadership and his unwavering commitment to championing future generations of environmental leaders and professionals, Tom McHenry is an exemplary alumnus of the Yale College of Forestry and Environmental Studies. And I'm thrilled to represent Yale on this happy day. And I offer congratulations to all of you on behalf of our community. Hi, I'm Bill Christian. I uh, bring you greetings from smoky, fiery Southern California. Uh, the um, 
One of the Claremont McKenna College is one of the five colleges in the Claremont Consortium, which includes CMC, Pomona, Scripps, Pitzer, and Harvey Mudd. Tom was a longtime adjunct professor and the vice chair of the Roberts Environmental Center at CMC. Our academic climate and physical setting in Claremont is enormously attractive, almost idyllic, some say. We like to brag of our stellar climate and energy policies, but lodged at the base of the most seismically active mountains in the lower 48, we await the big one in the midst of fires, floods, and water wars, and we wonder if Tom is prescient. <laughs> Having moved, <laughs> decided to move now. I've had the pleasure of knowing Tom a fairly long time, not as long as Judge Hoare or uh, at some of the other people, but it's been 25 years this spring. Um, I know him as a loyal friend, a fellow Pasadenan, a squash partner, a talented corporate counsel and devoted pro bono lawyer, an environmental law and policy professor at CMC. Tom taught environmental law and policy at Claremont McKenna for over two decades. About 15 years ago, he invited me to join him teaching the class. It was a fun and really productive time for me, and I think for Tom as well, through our desert trips and all of our classes uh, that went on interesting, uh, had interesting times. Tom really is an extraordinary teacher. He's patient, creative, inspiring, and spectacularly organized. He has a deep knowledge of our nation's colorful ecological and human history, of the sources of our values, of our national parks and forests, our wildernesses and our environmental sins, coupled with an ex excellent grasp of the state of play of our laws and the complexity of our regulatory system. And he can convey that all, the, all of that clearly, easily, and with elegant simplicity to even easily distractible undergraduates, of which we had a few. If Vermont doesn't require him to stay in the game to teach something, the school of world really missed a significant pedagogical, pedagogical star. <laughs> Tom has been solidly dedicated to and interested in public service, to pro bono legal work, and to effective leadership of an impressive and diverse array of state, local, and environmental NGOs, reaching from the city of Los Angeles to Yellowstone to Cuba and Indonesia. He has enriched the boards of many organizations, the Tahone Ranch Conservancy, the Santa Lucia Conservancy, Wildlife Trust, Roberts Environmental Sun Center at CMC, his son's schools, among many others. And as you've already heard, he's given selflessly of his time and energy to support Yale's Forestry Environmental Study School. Indeed, my work for the Nature Conservancy in the desert has benefited handsomely from his work, marshalling and enthusing tribes of associates Tom Incorporated then supported two nonprofit conservancies in our Death Valley region. I would perhaps sum much of Tom's work as getting interesting people to do productive stuff. He has an ability to channel his abundant energy and enthusiasm into unfailingly polite guidance that others naturally accept and follow. Tom is also generous and gregarious to a fault. He magnetically collects a wide array of friends and acquaintances. He has no hesitation in asking him to come along, help, contribute, and sometimes get up ridiculously early and go on long and unexpectedly draining adventures. <laughs> I predict that his boundless energy and willingness to jump on red-eye planes will serve Vermont Law School well, help you create an even more intellectually interesting, financially successful law school. We will miss McHenry. I will miss McHenry. Vermont Law School, you've stolen this amazing character. Use him well. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. We are gathered here to install and robe Thomas J.P. McHenry as the fourth president and ninth dean of Vermont Law School. Will Justice Eaton, Dean McHenry, Dean Mahali, and Dean Wilbanks, will you join me in the robing of J Thomas J.P. McHenry as president and dean of Vermont Law School? Yeah. <laughs> 
President and Dean McHenry, you have been robed in the academic regalia of Vermont Law School. You have received the Dean's Medallion as a symbol of your authority. It is with great pleasure on behalf of the Judiciary of the State of Vermont and Vermont Law School that I now present you with the Vermont Law School Dean's Plate. Inscribed hereon are the names of your predecessors and your name to mark the beginning of your tenure. President and Dean McHenry, you've been welcomed by representatives of the law school, the community, the bench and bar, and friends near and far. You've been robed and have received the symbols of your authority. I, now by the power vested in me as chair of the Board of Trustees of Vermont Law School, ask you before this community of scholars and friends if you accept the responsibilities with which you've been charged. This is your last opportunity. <laughs> I do. <laughs> now I'd, la I'd like to ask Glenn Berger from the class of 78 and a fellow trustee of Vermont Law School to introduce Tom McHenry. Thank you, Chris, and good afternoon. Yes, the good news is I am the 15th and last speaker before we turn it over to Tom, so I will be brief. However, before turning to my introduction, I would like to mention that our cha our, the chairman of the board, Chris Dutton, who has served on the VLS board for 11 years, three as chair, will, re will be retiring from the board after our meeting tomorrow. Chris has helped steer VLS through a difficult period, and I think we should all thank him for his professionalism, hard work, and dedication to VLS. I know the board and the VLS community will miss him. Thanks, Chris. As the last speaker and the person who was res responsible for introducing our next president and team, I was a little worried about what would be left to say about Tom that had not been said already by the previous 14 speakers. <laughs> so I did a little due diligence, interviewed a few people to try to come up with some obscure facts about Tom, which I hoped the previous 14 speakers would not mention. In addition, Tom, when he asked me to speak, told me to be brief, not to read his resume, and to have fun. So we'll try to do that. Starting at the very beginning, Thomas J. McHenry was born at Columbia Presbyterian <laughs> Hospital in New York and grew up on the e Upper East Side of Manhattan before going to the Groton School 
and as we know, to Yale, Yale, and NYU. His father, Barnabas, who is with us, was a lawyer for, for Reader's Digest, and his mother, Banny, is, is, is an historian. Tom has two brothers, and I think he's the oldest of the three. Tom's full name, by the way, and I'm sure you've all been wondering, what does the JP stand for? Tom's full name is Thomas Jefferson Perkins McHenry. He is not related to the third president of the United States, <laughs> but an ancestor of Tom's was an admirer, admirer of the president and named his son Thomas Jefferson Perkins, which survived Tom's great-grandfather, who doted on Tom's father, so Tom got the four-word name. All right, everybody with me? <laughs> and I have to say, I believe, unless someone can tell me differently, that Tom is the first president and dean with four names. <laughs> now, one other thing you should know about Tom, and I know I overheard so some people are already aware of this. You may have noticed that Tom is wearing pinstripes today. And you might think that's just because he wanted to wear a pinstripe suit, but Tom is actually, being a native New Yorker, a big Yankees fan. <laughs> Which I was going to say, I hope all of you New Englanders among us today will forgive him for. Please. Um, and by the way, I'm a Yankees fan also, and I just want to send my condolences to you Boston fans. <laughs> it's been a rough year. Um, Tom is married, as we know, to Elena Flager, and Elena is a native Californian, um, has not spent a lot of time in New England. So um, she's getting used to Vermont and New England, and uh, I've met her several times. She's a wonderful person and is the Director of Development and Communication at the Sequoia School in Pasadena. So I'd like to welcome you, Elena. Um, they have two sons, Jack and William. Um, and then in the world of, isn't this a small world category, it turns out that my wife's mother, my mother-in-law, Mary Cox, and Tom's mother went to college together. And they remained friends after college and socialized in New York. This summer, I was talking to my mother-in-law about Tom uh, and to mentioning that he was the new dean of the Vermont Law School. And she calls him Tommy and, and said that <laughs> she knew him when he was a little boy. So I asked, what was he like? <laughs> and she said, he had a tremendous amount of energy. He would run from one thing to another, and he just kept going and going. And I said, not much has changed. <laughs> so I should also mention that I was on the uh, board committee to select the new dean. And we had a bunch of terrific candidates. But with Tom's stellar academic credentials, his extensive environmental background, his broad teaching experience, his proven track record as a fundraiser, his corporate law firm experience, and his energy and optimism, we could not have found a better fit for VLS at this time. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, alumni, staff, students, and friends of VLS, I want to say we are extremely pleased to have Tom as our new president and dean, and we wish you, Tom, the best of luck in your tenure. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Thomas Jefferson Perkins McHenry, fourth president and ninth dean of the Vermont Law School. That was terrific. Thank you. You've done some public speaking. Good job. Thank you. Glenn, thank you so much. Um, I'm, if only a tenth of the things I've heard in the last half hour were true, I'd be an immensely happy person. But it is uh, it's an honor to be with you here today, and the good news is that I'm the last speaker. 
and I'm wearing what the trustees affectionately refer to as their bumblebee suits. <laughs> um, thank you, Chairman Dutton. I have some thank yous of my own to the trustees who are with us, to the former deans who are here. We have Mark Mahali on my left, Kinvin Roth so down there, Max Kepner as well. Um, we have Jeannie Shields, whose husband and former Dean Jeff Shields we honored earlier today in a touching ceremony down by the White River, which I'm sure Jeff would have, as you said, enjoyed. Um, and we also have Ann Deborah Voice, who you heard from, and I'll mention in just a moment. I want to thank the faculty and staff of Vermont Law School, our judicial representatives. Don't believe anything Sam Hoare tells you, by the way. <laughs> our academic representatives from Yale, the University of Vermont, President Sullivan, thank you, Bennington College, St. Michael's College, and Claremont McKenna College. We also have Katie Thomas. Are you here, Katie? Somewhere. Uh, from a class of 2013 from Senator Bernie Sanders' office. She always wears a Vermont Law School sweatshirt when she meets with us. And <laughs> Diane Derby from Senator Patrick Leahy's office. We have numerous alumni in the room, a number of whom I met. Christopher, you were in the back there checking your Blackberry earlier. And, uh, and uh, the townspeople of the lovely town of South Royalton, you sit in its square, in its green right now. And in particular, Larry Trottier, who I've had the pleasure of getting to know and who is trying to encourage me to buy a new tractor from his dealership. <laughs> I hope that was okay. I want to... I want to thank the, uh, all the supporters of Vermont Law School and the many of my friends who have traveled far and wide to celebrate this occasion. And much to my delight and surprise, the members of the class of 1980 who are sitting back there in the row who I went to forestry school with. I particularly want to thank my wife, and she also has, Glenn, a name which is fitting, which is Elena Dean Flager making me the second dean in our family. <laughs> and my parents, Barnabas and Bannon McHenry, and my sons, Jackson and William. I also want to thank our guest panelists this afternoon. If you were lucky enough to be here at 2 o'clock and hear from them, Roger Martella, the General Counsel for Environmental Health and Safety at General Electric uh, Operations Worldwide, uh, the environmental advocate writer. There's so many titles I would add in front of Gus Beth, but uh, one of a person we're particularly delighted to have here um, on our faculty as an emeritus member and the person whose green gown has given us the most gown envy today. <laughs> and former Secretary of Natural Resources, Deb Markowitz, now at the University of Vermont. And special thanks to David Mears, the director of our Environmental Law Center who organized the panel. I also want to thank the hardworking staff of Vermont Law School. They've been, they could not be, they've been thanked earlier, but they could not be thanked enough. They labored mightily to prepare for today. Like our mascot, the swan, they are elegant and graceful on the surface and paddling madly underneath. <laughs> Finally, and most importantly, I want to thank our students, especially those in the choir. You're the reason we teach and run this great school. I'm deeply honored by all of your presence here today and your commitment to and support of Vermont Law School. And I'm humbled by the challenges and inspired by the opportunities that lie ahead of us. Being in this position reminds me a little bit of the son who said to his mother that he didn't want to go to school that day. And his mother, my mother sitting here with me, asked him why. He told his mother that he was not sure that the students liked him, that he was not sure that the faculty liked him, and that he was not sure that the administration liked him. And his mother told him that he still had to go to school. And when he asked her why he had to school, she answered, because you're 62 years old and you're the dean. <laughs> so I'm here. And today is Friday the 13th, and we have enjoyed 13 welcome remarks, and Mark Latham stole a bit of my speech, but hopefully none of you suffer from para ske vide catriophobia, which is fear of Friday the 13th. And this this, this coincidence suggests that we summon one of the spirits that animates this great school. And that spirit is the one of the second and truly founding dean of the school, Thomas Debevoise. And you heard from Ann Debevoise earlier, Tom's widow. 
Tom imagined a school where hard work, devotion to learning the law, and the highest ethical standards would be taught and practiced. He had served as an assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York, as attorney general for the state of the Vermont, the youngest attorney general in our history, and as general counsel of the Federal Power Commission, now known as the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. He became dean of the law school in 1974, soon after the first class of students entered in the fall of 1973, and the school wasn't even at that time accredited by the American Bar Association. It was very much an experiment. And last Sunday afternoon, I spoke with Ann Debevoise, and she told me several things about Tom's vision for the school. The first was that he, and I quote, did instantly what is needed to be done and then plan for the long run. And I thought that wasn't bad advice for a dean. <laughs> Second, Tom said that students are your customers. And I think that remains true today. And finally, Ann told me that Tom advised the students to work beyond their presumed abilities. And I thought that was a great quote and great advice to any student and not bad advice to a new dean. So I'm gonna work beyond my presumed abilities. In its short 45 year history, Vermont Law School has graduated 6,000 attorneys, 1,200 master's students, and 250 LLM students. For those of you not familiar with the lingo, LLM is a master's degree in the law you get for usually a one year period after you've received your JD degree. Our graduates have gone on to law and policy careers in all 50 states. Last June, uh, we had graduates from last year's class take the bar in more than 30 states, so our graduates go almost everywhere. And they also work on law and policy issues in 23 different countries. We've built the finest and most highly rated environmental law and policy program in the country, perhaps the world. And the school continues today to experiment. We're a mission-driven school devoted to experiential education with a strong emphasis on environmental law and policy. We may be only 45 years old, but we are, as former Dean Kinvin Roth told me, now old enough to tell stories about ourselves. So my favorite is one I learned from a graduate of the second class, the class of 1977. He told his 40th reunion class that he'd been bumming around Europe after graduating from college, and I had the sense that had been going on for a year or two, in the early 1970s, and he'd arranged to make a transatlantic phone call with his parents for the first time in a number of months. And when he stoked with them, his father told him that he'd been accepted to law school. <laughs> and he told his father, that's very nice, Dad, but I didn't apply to law school. <laughs> and his father said, I did for you, and you've been accepted <laughs> to this new law school in Vermont. So the epilogue was great. He went to Vermont Law School, he graduated, he passed the New York bar, and he practiced law with his father for 25 years, which he described to the, his fellow alums as the best 25 years of his life. So I think of Vermont Law School as the Plymouth Rock of environmental law. The first program of its kind in the United States, chartered in 1972, graduating its first class in 1976, and starting the first master's program in 1978. We'll celebrate the 40th anniversary of our master's program next year, and we will begin the multiple celebrations of our 50th anniversary in 2022. I first learned about the position of dean in November of last year, and not a day has gone by since that time that I have not thought with excitement and anticipation about this job. I greatly enjoyed my years of law partnership, 30 of them. I worked with numerous interesting clients, small and large, a number of pro bono clients and organizations, as Bill Christian referred to, and I had the pleasure, and my law firm was very nice about allowing me to take on some regular teaching responsibilities. However, I wanted to devote myself to something new, some new tasks, and I wanted to be fully occupied. And my friends were correct to warn me, be very careful what you wish for. <laughs> and what excited me most about coming to Vermont Law School was the opportunity to participate in the training of the next generation of environmental law and policy students and those who seek social justice. So I'll share a few beliefs with you, a couple of uh, challenges, a couple of goals, and I'll be done. And by the way, when I'm done and we recess, we're gonna have a short 
uh, reception line and outgoing chair Chris Dutton and incoming chair Colleen Connor are right here and I will be in the reception line and we'd love to shake all of your hands. So my beliefs. I firmly believe in the value of education. I taught in the Upward Bound program in Lowell, Massachusetts and Berea, Kentucky at the Charles Hayden Goodwill Inn School for Boys in Dorchester, Massachusetts for kids who've been kicked out of the Boston public school system. As an environmental teaching assistant at Yale College under Carl Rydell, famous at the University of Vermont. As a lecturer at New York University and as an adjunct professor at Claremont McKenna College and here at Vermont Law School for four summers, including a summer in which Professor Chevrier and I took a group of students to look at comparative issues in California, Vermont, and French land use law involving a trip to France, which was referred to by the administration as Le Boondoggle. <laughs> and it was very educational, really. I believe deeply in the power of law and policy to achieve social justice and environmental quality. I believe in the power of science to inform solutions to the world's problems, like people in Washington be hearing me. I believe in diversity, and I am opposed to orthodoxy, whether it's on the right or on the left. And I believe that diversity of culture, language, and ethnicity benefits human progress and is fundamental to an enriched educational program. It's hard to imagine a more important time for sensible and forward-looking environmental laws and policies. At the national level, we're facing an assault on environmental regulation and an increasing perception, or at least a perception at the moment, that environmental law and policy have not served us well when they have over the last 45 years, in fact, brought cleaner air and water, regulated waste management, and protected crucial habitat and biodiversity. We have somehow conflated or allowed to be conflated a natural human urge against being told what to do with the important task of achieving environmental quality. And I hope we can fix that. I know this position as dean brings challenges in law school education. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that today. Law schools have been challenged since 2010 by changes in enrollment and the legal marketplace. And these external factors have had their effects on Vermont Law School. We've responded appropriately by tightening our belts where necessary, exploring and developing new programs and initiatives, including an expanded master's program. And I'm very pleased to say online learning. We're doubling the number of online learners this semester in our entering cl class. This could not have been accomplished without the support and cooperation of our dedicated staff and faculty. Their strong sense of continuity and community is a hallmark of this institution. And you're right, Mark, that that was one of the reasons that I chose to come here. As an independent and private institution and one of the few in the United States, one that can and should be able to respond nimbly to these kinds of changes, we welcome the challenge of doing our jobs more efficiently, more effectively, and more creatively. And we will compete with other institutions to, to offer the best possible education to our students. Many of those students are now taking on substantial debt to obtain a legal education. And upon graduation, that debt limits their ability to take on, to pursue their career uh, and their life choices. And at the same time, law schools, as you heard referred to earlier, are constrained by increasing discounting of tuition without regard to need in order to attract and enroll the best students, attract and enroll. We need to make progress in this regard, and I'm pleased to let you know that we recently received a commitment of almost $500,000 to support scholarships for needy students at the school and provide them with a VLS education. We'll need to do more, and I look forward to doing so. I will remain, Mark Mahali, in the hunt for billionaires. <laughs> I want to share three overarching goals, and then I'll be done. One is being Vermont's law school. A second is increasing and enhancing our environmental focus. And the third is developing new and innovative programs. We already do a lot for Vermont. And uh, Duke Eaton, ju uh, Justice of the Supreme Court, mentioned that. But I would like us to do more. We have about 10% of our students who come from the state of Vermont but we have 20% of our alumni who live in the state of Vermont, which means that they fell in love with Vermont or they fell in love in Vermont, but they're here. 
We have more than 1,300 alumni. They serve in government agencies, private law firms, businesses, and nonprofits. Some of them even make cheese and beer on the side. We'd like to continue our close working relationship with the Vermont Bar and the Judiciary. And as you were told, we hold two of the five seats on the Vermont Supreme Court. I would like to hold a majority of seats on the Vermont <laughs> Supreme Court before I step down as dean. And I will let Governor Scott know about that. <laughs> Our South Royalton and environmental law clinics provide essential public services. And the low bono, as opposed to pro bono challenge in Vermont, is the increasing cost of legal services mean many people are unable to receive that assistance. And David Mears and I are working on a program to help assist with that. We need to replace the next generation of Vermont attorneys, and that's part of our job. And we also need to increase our physical plant here and hopefully build a dormitory. So if you'd like to talk to me about that after the meeting, please don't hesitate to chat with me. So I hope to deepen and strengthen these ties with our great state of Vermont. Secondly, I want to continue our leadership in environmental law and policy. It is our flagship program. But for any of the faculty members who are here today who teach courses that don't have the word environmental in front of them, you will know, as I do, that the practice of environmental law involves contract torts, criminal law, civil procedure, and all the wonderful things that you teach. In fact, there is an argument those things are just as important as the courses which have the word environmental in them. We have the largest number of courses in environmental law and the largest faculty in the country in environmental law. But our faculty not only teach, they not only research, but they are also actively involved in their fields. They give programs, they write appellate briefs, they litigate, uh, and uh, they actively counsel students. Uh, our graduates place in government agencies, nonprofits, and law firms around the country, as I told you earlier, all 50 states. And I'd like to see us do more in the climate area. We heard from uh, Gus Beth during the panel presentation this afternoon how climate has become the overarching environmental issue. It touches all areas of environmental law, but it also touches areas such as transportation, energy, land use, health care, and education. And we need to do more to understand those drivers and address those issues. And the time is short. And as the expression goes, the water is rising. Finally, I'd like to talk, I'd like to see us engage in other programs, too, that immediately come to mind are restorative justice and international ones. And I hope shortly to be able to report that we will have received acquiescence from the American Bar Association to start a master's degree program in restorative justice headed up by Professor Bobby Sand. And we hope to know by that by the end of this, uh, this fall. We take great pride in Vermont Law School in educating our students, in the words of Tom Debevoise, beyond their presumed abilities. And we take the greatest satisfaction as educators in their engagement and their advancement, their professional success as they transform themselves into law and policy experts right before our eyes and join their intellects and ambitions to the service of the world. And that is our function, and it's especially our function at a school devo devoted to the teaching of both law and policy, and an especially satisfying one here at Vermont. I welcome the challenges that lie ahead of us, as well as the opportunities. And I ask for your guidance and support as we imagine and create the Vermont Law School of the future, a future committed to the best possible education for all of our students, a continuing commitment to the promotion of environmental quality and social justice. And I hope and trust that you will join with me, with the faculty and staff and students to VLS, to realize that in a more just and sustainable world. Thank you very much. I'm supposed to tap the mace on the floor. <laughs> we invite you to follow the procession to the Vermont Law School campus.
to greet the dean and enjoy the rest of today's festivities. The installation of Thomas Jefferson Perkins McHenry as the ninth leader of Vermont Law School is concluded. <laughs>